Hello, our midday meditation today will be an Ignatian imaginative meditation and it will be on the road to Emmaus where Jesus meets his two disciples after the crucifixion and shows them who he truly is in his freedom and his blessing and his care. An Ignatian prayer practice, an, imag an imaginative walk to Emmaus. Cleopas and you are walking along this dusty road that's going towards Emmaus. It's quite a long walk, it's six miles from Jerusalem. And you've been talking to each other about all the things that have happened. How hard it is to understand some things. The sense of injustice, sense of sadness, has all that you'd hoped for stopped happening? Had you put your hope in the wrong person? It's all so much to take in. And you find yourself being talked to by someone who's caught you up on the road. And he asks you, what's been, what is it that you've been discussing that's keeping you in such deep discussion and thinking as you walk along? And then you stop and look at him, incredulous that he says he doesn't know what's happened. And the wave of sadness just rushes over you again. Cleopas says to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? You both can't believe that he's been unaware. But he says to you, what things? So you both try to explain the things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth. How the chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. And you share your hope in that he was the one who was going to redeem your people. But sadness just overtakes you. It wasn't supposed to end like this. With heavy hearts, tired feet, you continue to walk to Emmaus. And you continue talking about what has happened three days ago. You talk about the women who really sound quite mad that they were in the tomb early in the morning and they didn't find the body. The body was gone. Jesus' body just wasn't there. And then they told you about a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with you went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see Jesus. Then the man walking beside you gives a sigh and says to you how foolish you are, and how slow you are to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter his glory, he says. You're both rather taken aback. Who is this man? And then he just decides that he can explain to you, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, the things that happened around Jesus that were foretold in the scriptures. And there's something about how he talks about these things that makes you want to listen. This man is truly a great teacher. And as you listen and walk, you become more and more accustomed to the sound of his voice. And you get to Emmaus, but he looks like he's going to continue walking. But you both decide that no, he should stay with you because it's, it's almost the evening. And the day's nearly over. So he agrees to come and stay. And so you come in and you wash your hands and you wash your feet. And the meal, meal is prepared there for you. 
So you all sit down at the table. And then he takes the bread and he blesses it. And he, he breaks it and gives it to, to you. And something happens. You look at his hands giving you the bread. And these hands look so familiar. Then you look up and you see that that was Jesus. But as soon as you recognise him, he's gone. He's vanished. And you say to each other, our hearts were burning while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. And then you realised that the master was continu continuing to teach you as you walked. So you get up, get your stuff together and return to Jerusalem at that late hour because you're just full of this knowledge. You want to tell everybody. And you get there and you find that the eleven and their companions are all gathered together and you say to them, the Lord has risen indeed. We have seen him. And they say, yes, and so has Simon. And you explain that through his breaking of the bread, you recognised him. And you all sit and think about the broken bread, and the broken body, and the broken hopes. And then you start to see a renewed hope, a renewed spirit, a renewed way to walk with Jesus. And you're humbled that he came to talk to you on that road. And you recognise how much you are cared for by him. You feel as though you are an unimportant person, but his coming to be with you makes you realise that to him you are very important. And so you sit in silence for a while, thinking about Jesus coming into your lives in this new and special way and you're thankful and joyful and blessed.